Praise the Lord. I said, there's such a thing as Christian growth. When you watch your life develop from one level to another. It's just like in school, you know that you're learning something, and then you're moving from one class to another, from one grade to another. See? Many times when we tell people, um, God's taking you to a new level, I think a lot of times they don't understand exactly what we're talking about. What do you mean by the Lord taking you to another level? What is this other level? Have you ever thought about it? One time, a young guy was told, um, when you receive the Holy Spirit, you'll never be the same again. He said, so what am I going to be? <laughs> See, he wasn't sure what they were talking about. The same way, many times when we say, God is going to take you to another level. You may say, praise the Lord. But in your mind, what do you know is that other level? What does it mean to be taken to another level? What, what, what is this other level? When God promotes you, what does it mean? How does God promote you? Praise God. You're all quiet now. You're listening, right? Thank you. I like the way you're so quiet right now. Okay. Do you want to get to that other level? Is that what you're waiting for? You want to move to the next level? What level are you now anyway? <laughs> well, somebody said, whatever level I am, I want to move to another one. <laughs> Praise God. Okay, there's such a thing as being taken from one level of grace to another. The Bible talks about being blessed and moved from grace to grace. It talks about being blessed and taken from faith to faith. That means one level of faith to another, one level of grace to another. Like the Bible says, he giveth more grace. So he does give more grace. See? Now when, when Jesus saves you, in other words, when you receive salvation from Christ and you are born again, you begin a new walk with Christ. A new life with Christ. Not the same life you had before you were born again. And that's the reason the Bible says, if any man be in Christ, he is a new species. He is a new kind of man. A new type of being. That's what the Bible declares. He is a new creation. Now, you may look the same outwardly, but inwardly you are not the same. When you're born again, you are born with the, the life and nature of God. Now that's a fact. You understand? That's a fact. It's a present hour fact. It's not a promise. It's a fact. Now, can I read something to you from Second um, Peter? Second Peter chapter number one. Hallelujah. I love the Word of God. See, your mentality is so important to God. The way you think. It's very, very important to God. Because your response determines your destiny. Your mentality. Your way of reasoning. 
is very important to God. So always God seeks to do something to your mind. In Romans chapter 12, when you read from verse 1 into verse 2, in the first verse it tells us about presenting our bodies. In the second verse, he says, And be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. That means by changing your way of thinking. That's Romans chapter 12 verse 2. He says, be transformed. Transformed is the word um, coming from the Greek. The Greek word is metamorpho, meaning it's a metamorphosis. Meaning a change of states. You change from one state to another. So he's not talking about putting on some clothes and changing them. He's talking about your state. A change in form. A change in the glory of your life. From one degree to another. He says, be ye transformed. Metamorphosed from one level to another he's talking about. He says, by the renewing of your mind, by changing your way of thinking. See, if God cannot change your way of thinking through his word because you do not listen to it, your life will never change. And you know, there is a law of death in the world. From the day you come out of, your, of the womb of a woman... You are headed for the tomb. Death begins the day a man is born. There's death in everything. In other words, if you leave anything the way it is, it will be corrupted. That's the reason for maintenance of different kinds. So, God seeks to... Impact your mind with His Word. To change your mind with His Word. He says, be ye transformed, metamorphosed by the renewing of your mind. By changing your way of thinking. So, He gives us the necessary material to think. Now, in the Old Testament, He said the same thing to Moses. And then after Moses, He said the same thing to Joshua. The young man came in and God said to Joshua, he said, meditate on the law. He said, meditate. So that you will make your way prosperous. He didn't say meditate and I'll make you prosperous. No, prosperity is in your hands. Whether you prosper or fail is in your hands. And the earlier and the sooner you get that understanding, the better for you. Prosperity is not an accident. It doesn't just happen. It's in your hands. I'm talking about true prosperity is in your hands. You are the one to alter your way of thinking. Change your way of thinking. You know people who get sick and then they get healed? You can be healed by the power of God and fall sick again. It doesn't even have to last a day before you get sick again. In other words, if you don't change the way you used to think before you got sick, you get sick again. If you don't change the way you used to think before your poverty destroys you, even if all the money in the world, even if all the prosperity in the world was given to you, you're going to be poor again. You've got to change your way of thinking. So he says, be transformed, be moved from glory to glory by changing your way of thinking. Romans 12, 2. He says, renewing your mind. Renewing your mind. And that word renew means, in that verse, it means bringing new things in. Exchanging the old for the new. That's what it means by renewing your mind. Exchanging the old for the new. You give up the thoughts you used to have and you take the new thoughts of God. 
Whereas you used to think poor, now you think rich. Whereas you used to think like you were of the world, now you think you're of God. Hallelujah. Whereas you used to think defeat, now you think victory. Success. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Whereas you used to think in a selfish way, now you think love. You think giving. You think blessing. You think helping others. Glory to God. Whereas you used to think sad and bitter, now you're happy and joyful. Reaching out to others, not waiting for somebody to make you happy. Oh, glory to God. What a life when you're not in bondage to the feelings of other people. You know, sometimes we live in bondage because of the feelings of other people. We try to make some people happy and because they're not happy around us, then it rubs off on us. And then we cannot walk in happiness just because somebody is not happy with us. No, don't live in that bondage. You can be happy all by yourself. You have a responsibility to make yourself happy. And the responsibility, therefore, to make others happy. Don't think they are to make you happy. Get bigger than that and make them happy. You understand? Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. So, changing your way of thinking is necessary. It's so important to God. Because you are His key. And He wants you to be successful. And He knows you're not going to be any more successful than you are now, except you change your way of thinking. You say, what am I going to change it for? Hey, take His word. Listen to His thoughts. Listen to what God says. And take what He says. Accept His thoughts in place of yours. That's what it, that's what it means. For example, now you're born again. We already said what the Bible tells us in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17. If any man being Christ, he is a new creation. Then I begin to say, I'm a new creation. Now, if I'm a new creation, I must be a superior being. Because God wouldn't recreate a being to be subject to the same things that he was subject to before. So I give praise to God. I'm a new creation. I think that way. And I talk that way. I'm a new creation. I know who I am. I'm a new creation. I cannot be defeated. Greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. See that? And you know what? When you think like that, you are transforming your life. You are transforming your life. You are moving yourself forward. You are making progress. He said to Joshua, he said, do this thing. So that you will prosper everywhere you go and have good success. Oh, thank you, Lord Jesus. Good success. That means remarkable success. Not ordinary success, but remarkable success. It's like everybody's in class and then they say everybody in the class passed. But three of them got awards. So everybody was successful in the class, but three of them had good success. And God wants you to have good success. Say that with me. Good success. Good success. Hallelujah. Lord. Don't think. Don't think there's no way for you. You know, sometimes we look around and find ourselves as though we're hemmed in, hedged in, and then we wonder, there's no way out. No, 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 no. God is big. Oh. Your God is big. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Can you trust Him? Say, I trust Him with my life. life. Alright, I told you to open 2 Peter chapter 1. I want to read that to you. 2 Peter chapter number 1. I'm reading from verse number 3. I like verse 2, so let's take it from verse 2. Grace and peace be multiplied unto you. Woo! See, this, if you really open your mind, there's so much in God's Word. I could have church all by myself with verse 2. I'm telling you, look at it. He says, Grace and peace be multiplied unto you through the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord. What is He telling you? Look at it. He's telling me it's up to me to have grace and peace multiplied in my life. 
He says, I got something to do with it. I can make grace and peace be multiplied in my life. In other words, I can have an abundance of grace. I can have an abundance of peace in my life. And it's up to me. How? He says, through the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord. So, that's not up to God. The knowledge there is up to me. So, find out about God. Find out about Jesus. Where? Through His Word. The more I know about God and about Jesus, the more grace I enjoy. The more peace I enjoy. Simple. Isn't that simple? It's right there. But that people praying, Oh God, do this for me. Oh God, I need peace in my life. You're not serious. <laughs> See how to get it multiplied, glory to God. Multiply. You want an abundance of peace? Get to know God and His Son, Jesus. By studying about both He and His Son in the Word. Hallelujah. Alright, now verse 3. According as his divine... <laughs> oh, glory to God. Oh, if I just keep reading this whole thing, if I decide to read the whole chapter, I don't know how I'm going to be shouting before the whole service is over. Okay, yeah, the verse 3. I try not to go too far. Verse 3. According... Hey, oh dear. Uh, according as his divine power... Ooh. Oh, this is not man's power, but his divine power. His, his divine power. His almighty power. All conquering power. His omnipotence. He says, his divine power hath a, oh. look at it, it's not a promise, hath given unto us. When I see things like this in the Bible, they make me shout. Look at His divine power has forgiven. He's not going to give it. He's not hoping to give it. He's not promising to do it. He's not saying if I live well, well then He's going to do it. He didn't say when I get to heaven He'll do it. Uh-uh. He didn't say if I pray and fast you will do it. He says His divine power has forgiven unto us. All things that pertain on the life and godliness. Oh, glory to God. Oh, glory to God. His divine power hath given unto us all things that pertain to life. Zoe. The God kind of life. The super life. He says, His divine power hath given unto us all things that pertain to life and godliness. That means all things that pertain to the God kind of life. And who we'll glory to God and the God kind of way of doing things. God's ways of doing things. Godliness. Godliness. He's given me all things by His divine power. All things that pertain to life. The Greek word there for life is zoe. It's not suchi. Suchi is the human life. But he uses zoe, the God kind of life. Huh. Life that cannot be defeated. Life that is endless. Life that is, it's called a super life. That's what you got when you were born again. That's what the English called eternal life because they couldn't render it properly. They call it everlasting life or they call it eternal life. Every time you read it, everlasting life or eternal life, he's talking about zoe. They don't have enough words to express it. They don't have the right word to tell you exactly what God is saying. The Greeks call it zoe, the God type of life. It's the life that God has in Him that makes Him God. That's what says, for God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son that whosoever believeth in Him should not perish but have the way. Uh, hey! And when you are born again, you receive the way. 
And then you begin to walk in the light of the way. You walk in the light of life. In the light of the way. You think as a man that has the way. Not as a man that has chuchi. The ordinary human life. You walk as a man that has the way. I've got the way in me. I refuse to be sick. I have the way in me. I cannot have an infection. I have the way in me. So I do not fail. Huh. The way. Hallelujah. Now look at it. He says, According as his divine power hath forgiven unto us all things that pertain unto life and godliness. How? How? How does it happen? How does it happen? It's not by you praying and asking God. Uh -uh. It's not by you hoping it's going to happen. It's not by you thinking it's going to happen. It's not by you asking God, Oh God, why am I going to do it? No. It's not when you die and go to heaven. Look at it. Through the knowledge of Him that hath called us to glory. <laughs> He's called us to glory. It's not a life of shame, but a life of glory. <laughs> He's called us to glory. So we can square our shoulders, chin up, chest out. Walk like somebody special. He's called us to a life of glory. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Experience true worship over and over again as Pastor Chris takes you through moving and inspirational moments of worship in this one-of-a-kind musical compilation. It includes such tracks as I Believe in Miracles, Sweet Jesus and many more. And listen to it over and over again. So waste no time in getting your copy today. Order now by calling any of the numbers now showing on your screen or online at www.christembassy.org. Remember what Paul wrote to Timothy? He said, let no man despise thy youth. He says, but be an example of the believers. Who? An example of the believers. Who are the believers? Super beings. 
Thank you, Lord Jesus. Can you think like this? Can you think like this? This is God's thoughts. See, it's God's way of thinking. This is God's way of thinking. There are a lot of people who are ignorant. You know, I wonder, why won't some folks just look into the Bible? If you just look into the Bible and study for yourself, you'd be blessed. Because the Bible, the Word of God, the Word of God is anointed. Even if nobody preached it to you, if you would just read it with the power and the presence of the Holy Spirit, you'd be blessed. But no, they're too busy to read it. They're too busy to study it. And then they wonder why their lives, just like nothing is happening. And you know what? When you believe you've done everything you ought to do, and you believe you know everything you ought to know, if you find someone else who claims to have done the same things you said you did, And to know the same things you said that you know, if you find that fellow being more successful than yourself, you're going to become bitter. And you're going to begin to say, he's lying. He's cheating. Why? Because you're looking at yourself. You say, I did the same thing. It didn't work that way. I prayed the same prayer. It didn't work that way. They must be cheating. They must be doing something they ought not to be doing. Because you think you know everything. You think you've done everything you ought to have done. And that's pride. Why don't you think someone somewhere could know something better than you? Why can't you for a moment suppose that it is possible, maybe God could show to someone else what he has never shown to you? You see? Many don't think that way. And that's the reason for the bitterness. Glory to God. Because, you know, when, when, when Jesus raised somebody from the dead, a little girl, they said, well, she was in a coma. <laughs> All right. He got to the city of Nain. And there was a young man being taken to the, to the burial ground. He raised that one from the dead. They said, well, actually, even though we were going to bury him, uh, it was a prolonged coma. <laughs> and Jesus said, I know what to do. <laughs> one day they came to him and said, Lazarus is sick. <laughs> Jesus waited for Lazarus to die. And when the man died, he turned to his disciples, he said, Lazarus is sleeping, and I'm glad for your sakes that I was not there. They said, sir, if he's sleeping, he's alright. Uh-uh. He said, I mean, he's dead. He said, come on, let's go wake him up. He waited. Four days after the man died. Now he shows up at the gate of the city. Somebody rushes to him. They said, why didn't you come early? He said, well, I'm here now. Uh Uh-uh, you should have been here earlier. He said, I'm the resurrection and the life. He said, he said, where have you laid him? They said, over there in the cave. He went there. They said, master, you don't need to get in. By this time, he stinks. Jesus said, that's exactly what I want. (laughs) By now, he stinks. Skeptics everywhere. He said, by this time, he stinks. He said, all right. And all the folks, professional mourners, (laughs) they were paid to cry, you know. (laughs) He's dead. (laughs) Lazarus, Aziz, he's dead. And Jesus got there, looked at everybody, and the Bible says, Jesus wept. See how he loved him. See, even Jesus is kind. See how he loved him. You ain't kind because he loved him. He said, Father, thank you. I know you hear me always. But because of all these unbelievers over here, I'm talking to you in their presence. 
ആക്കൽ ഇവൻ പാട് ഹി ഇസ് എ റോഡ് ഓഫ് സ്റ്റോൺ അവേ you get <laughs> he's dead I love him. we've dressed him up already he's been bound with great coats we can't do that Lord he said I've said and rolled us turn away didn't I tell you if you believe you will see the glory of God <laughs> rolled us turn away oh, okay 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 alright they rolled us turn away Wondering what he's going to do. Oh boy, I love Jesus. He doesn't go right inside. He's the same. Okay. Mm-mm. He stands aloof. <laughs> And then, the biggest thing. He calls him as though he's talking to somebody in another room. <laughs> he refuses to recognize death. He calls him loud and clear. Lazarus, come out! He didn't say rise from the dead. He didn't say wake up. He wanted to just, I mean, he wanted to bust their bubble. He said, Lazarus, come out! They thought, didn't you hear? He's dead. What's wrong with this man? We say he's dead. You think we're fools? We put him in the cave. You're calling him like, he, 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 he's dead. But, hey. Boom. Boom. Listen. Whoa, whoa. What's he trying to do? Did any of these disciples come in here in the night time? Boom. Boom. Hold on. And Jesus is watching. They hear a sound. Boom. Someone says, Mary. Is everything all right? Did you put anybody inside there? <laughs> Boom. Boom. And right at that entrance is a man coming like this. Uh. Uh. But he's bound with great clothes. And Jesus... Everybody's going to... Uh, um, uh, Jesus says, uh-uh. Lose him and let him lose him. <laughs> They take the thing off his face, brother. It's Lazarus going again! You couldn't keep Mary down now. You couldn't keep Martha down now. Now they're dancing, sailing high to heaven. Glory! Glory! And all them Jews who didn't love Jesus. Yeah! The God of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob. Everybody was dancing. You know what? You would think everybody would be happy about it. And that they would come and say, Jesus, I have a cousin that died some weeks ago. No, 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 no. They go like this. <laughs> That guy's pulling a lot of crowd. He just raised the dead. Everybody's going there. He's got a large crowd in Bethany right now. We've got to kill him. Nail him. Right? That's what they said. They said, kill him. The man who raised somebody from the dead. They didn't think he had power to rise from the dead. They said, kill him. <laughs> How senseless and wicked men are. Kill him. For healing the sick and casting out devils. For feeding the hungry. For stopping deaf ears and giving sight to the blind. Raising the dead. Cleansing the lepers. What wrong had he done? They said, kill him. For preaching good news to people. And helping them have good self, a good self-image. Self-value. They said, kill him. They didn't want him around. No wonder the Bible says, The heart of man is deceitful above all things. Desperately wicked. Who can know it? Desperately twisted. 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 When God thinks this way, He thinks the other way. His reasoning has been corrupted. 
corrupted. He can't think right. He can't think good thoughts about people. He hates those who help him. What a life. What a life. Why do men hate those who help them? Why? I'll never forget what your husband said. We were in that meeting, 1980. I'll never forget it. He said, poverty is a curse. Many didn't like it, but it's true. Poverty is a curse. When you're poor, you hate those who help you. Poverty is not a state of material things. It is a state of mind. It's a state of mind. It's not the absence of the necessities of life. It's a state of mind. Africa has the wealthiest resources in the world right before them. They stand on gold. They walk on gold and diamonds. They tread on oil and natural gas. It's all theirs for the taking. They have food in abundance. The wealth of this world belongs in Africa. So why are they poor? It's a state of mind. The unwillingness to appreciate those who help them. And when you refuse to appreciate those who help you, you suffer for it. Because you will never then have the intelligence to do what they did for you. It's a place that loves the dead. They hate the living. They celebrate you when you die. They hate you when you leave. Never you be an African. Be a Christian. Poverty is a curse. It's a curse. Jesus said, you are not of the world. I've chosen you out of the world. Don't think like your grandfather. Don't think like your grandmother. You're a new creation. You're born after the second and last Adam. His name is Jesus. Don't resemble your granddad. Resemble Jesus. Are you hearing me? Take his word. Believe in him. Learn to love and appreciate good things. Hatred is a trademark of witchcraft. Will you love good things? I said, will you love good things? Yes. Make up your mind about it. If you love good things, they'll be there for you. Every day we tread on gold. Every day. But we don't know it. We tread on wealth. Wealth untold. We don't know it. You will never see it until you learn to appreciate those who can see it. Because they're the only ones who can teach you how to see it. When something good happens in the life of someone, many rise to bring him down because they want him to be where they are. If you're born again, you're a son of God. You're a son of God, not a son of the soil. The soil is less than you. You're a new creation. And somebody says, well, he said, dost thou art to dust, thou shalt return. Well, the Bible says, if the same spirit that raised up Christ from the dead dwells in you, he'll vitalize your mortal body. 
So what? There's power that has changed your, your body. And when Jesus shows up, the Bible says, in the twinkling of an eye, we shall be changed. He didn't say we shall return to dust in the twinkling of an eye. No, no. We shall be changed. Hallelujah. Are you still there? You sure you're still there? Yeah.